the program links innovativeness with creativity. Now we all know what creativity is at the individual level, but innovation is organizational creativity, which means the ability to generate ideas, the ability to select those that go into a cohesive direction for the organization and then execute project management. And in this course, the participants will learn how to managerially put a system in place that allows the organization to execute these three things. Innovation happens everywhere in the organization. Innovation happens in manufacturing, in service delivery, in the call center, in the service organization, in field maintenance. Uh, so it really cuts across all the areas. Um, uh, and, and what the areas do isn't even isolated. You even have to link. So innovation really cuts across. You cannot make an organization innovative by just doing brilliant R&D. It doesn't work that way. The problem with innovation is that it is in the short term disruptive. You're trying to execute your operations and be efficient and reliable and have low cost. And here come people and say, oh, you got to do it differently. And in the short one, it just disrupts all your efficiency and all your good plans. And therefore, innovation is an investment for the future, uh, but it's painful. Uh, it distracts you what you're trying to do this quarter for the numbers that you have to report to your shareholders next month. And therefore, some of the stuff that people say in interviews is lip service. They're saying they want to be innovative because they look at the long term, but then in the day-to-day -day priorities, it's always trumped by the needs of doing something now. And that's really where the difficulty is, or, or part of the difficulty. The program is not only about classically what people view as innovation, which is new products. New products, that's, by the way, what happens in R&D organizations. So we'll have some best practice in that. Uh, for example, how uh, a global leader like Siemens connects um, product development in their business units to what happens in their corporate uh, uh, research unit. How do you make the links and how do you transfer ideas? But innovation is more than that. Innovation is also about how do you talk to your customer? So not the technology of your new products, but how do you approach the customer? I give you an example. Uh, in Germany, there is a bank which is called Team Bank, um, which is really a consumer credit organization. And they have a market position of the fairest consumer credit in Germany. Um, that's an innovation because they have been able to take a slogan, a soft, very hard uh, uh, to pin down thing into very precise operational principles of how they run their processes. For example, when you have trouble paying back your consumer credit, they will not immediately threaten you with a lawyer, but they work, will work with you, helping you in problem solving in order to get back on track in your payments. Um, so, so there's innovation in how you talk to the customer and how you offer a new relationship with the customer and how you then back this up with your actual organization capabilities. So innovation is also then about processes. For example, the famous company Zara, the fashion company Zara in Spain, they do not compete by having different or better clothes than others but they compete by having a process that allows them to put a new collection out into their stores every two months. And therefore, uh, they don't have obsolete fashion um, collections. Uh, the customers know that every two months something completely new is in the stores, so they have a, a motivation to go back there. Uh, it's innovation by your process capabilities. So we will be looking at examples from companies across all of those dimensions of where you can introduce innovation in your organization, not only how you introduce new products. In the end, what an organizational culture that fosters innovation does is, A, it allows people to come up with their ideas. Ideas do not only come from the creative geniuses, the handful that you have in your organization. Ideas come from everybody. How do you give people a voice, a possibility to to give the ideas that they have to give because people want to do that. How do you give them a little channel uh, where they can be listened to and possibly, after a little bit of selection, play with this and try it out a little bit? And then secondly, the second piece of an organizational culture is how do you select the few out of the many that ideally you want to have that really help you with what you're trying to do in the organization without hitting the people in the face whose ideas are not being chosen without being too narrow because then you become short-sighted, without becoming too open because then you don't have priorities anymore. 
So innovative cultures are cultures that allow you to do this, motivating people uh, to engage in this kind of, kind of an overall system that allows you to generate ideas and then choose the best ones. That's really what an innovative culture is. It's not something mystical. It's something that you can actually fill with uh, managerial life, uh, giving people specific incentives to do these things. An organization is creative uh, if it encourages all of its employees or a large part of them to give the ideas that they have to give because everybody has a little bit of creativity. Creativity is in the network and not in the heads of a few geniuses. And then have a system where you bring them up uh, and where you are then able to choose to prioritize the ones that really help you uh, with some crazy experiments on the side in order to hedge uh, in, 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 in the face of a very high environmental uncertainty. That's what makes an organization innovative. And when you say it this way, it doesn't sound mystical. It sounds like something that you as a senior manager can actually tackle um, in a rational way. And that's what people will learn in this program. We will work with the participants during the week that they spend here in order to prepare exactly that to happen. Because this is, uh, experience tells us, a big hurdle between seminars and the reality when they go back to their offices uh, and, and find an email inbox with 100 emails. Um, so we will work with them in order to make a plan uh, to prepare uh, what is the most valuable that you are taking out of this program. How can you translate this into something specific that you can do next week when you're going back to the office?